Hello there, everybody, and welcome back to Leading Our Own Way. Today on the show, I have a Mr. Jason Tuttle, all the way from just outside Atlanta, Georgia, in from the United States of America. He um, unfortunately lost his son, Zachary, two and a half years ago in January of 2022. We talk, about, we talk about the journey that he went on in losing his loved one and the experience of the day that he lost his loved one and how he and his lovely family um, had to learn to live without their baby boy um, who was um, in his teenage years and him is him and his wife Jennifer have brought up the two children um, Samantha and Zachary with certain needs um, and it has a beautiful way of articulating his grief uh, a beautiful way of how he um, gives to the world and created a safe space online uh, where he's created a community where people can come and talk about how they have um, lost a loved one and how they deal with losing a, um, a child as well. Here's a picture of Jason and his son Zachary and uh, we go through um, what his family have had to go through over the last few years and um, we have a great chat and he has some many many insights uh, to help how other people might be able to you know navigate themselves through their own trauma as well so stay tuned for the episode with jason and we'll be right back after the intro welcome to leading our own way i'm your host andrew white and this is the podcast that unveils captivating narratives of resilience and personal triumph this podcast is for anyone seeking inspiration and insights on overcoming life's challenges Follow and subscribe, and then we can lead together forever. Good morning, Jason Tuttle. How are you today, mate? I'm doing quite well. Still trying to wake up with my cup of coffee. <laughs> I'm, I'm, uh, I'm going to have to say a, a big thank you for joining us so early because it's nearly bedtime for me here in Australia, but uh, you're just outside Atlanta, Georgia, USA. Is that correct? That is correct. And it's currently about 7, 10, 7, 15 in the morning here. Uh, it's probably the the best time you and and you, I believe I'm the third Australian podcast you've uh, you've appeared on. Um, so, so you must be quite used to doing this type of this timing, to, so it fits in for everybody, right? <laughs> yeah, um, the first international podcast I did was in Sweden, and it that was a that was a ridiculously early time. But I mean. <laughs> For those of us in this world wanting to do the podcast and promote and all that stuff, you know, you do what you got to do. Absolutely, yeah, no, absolutely. I've done one at one a.m., but uh, this is this is okay. I'm 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 hoping you're okay though. I I, I didn't want to ruin your day, but um, <laughs> first of all, Jason, thanks for joining us on Leading Our Own Way. Thank it's you. such a pleasure to have you on. Um, and um, another uh, inspiring journey that I came across online, and uh, just had to reach out to you. So once mm -hmm. again, I appreciate it, mate. Thank um, you for having me on. No, uh, I think you're probably more of a pro on podcasts and behind the mic than I am. So uh, you'll have to teach me some ways to uh, <laughs> get a good message across. Uh, but Jason, um, tell us a little bit about yourself, and, and um, uh, because I would have done an intro to this, and we would have, I would, have, I'm going to speak about uh, letters to Zachary. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what letters to Zachary is and why you've set it up? Okay, Letters to Zachary was kind of a, an, an evolution of my grief journey is uh, the most simplistic way to explain it. Um, after my son had passed away about two and a half years ago, I was going to therapy at the time. And uh, I have always said I'm a big kind of proponent of therapy, men, women, young, old, children, whichever. I, I think it can benefit just about anybody. And in one of those sessions, it was my therapist that said, have you ever thought about journaling? <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, at the time, the irony of all of that was I told her, I said, you know, I, I just don't know if writing is, is kind of my thing. And so I molded over for several months and I decided one day to post it online in a, excuse me, <clears throat> In a, in a grief group. And it was from that just huge reaction that I got that I thought, well, maybe I have something here. And mm -hmm. I continued to post and got kind of that same big reaction. Wow. 
Excuse so me. I shouldn't have got you up so early, Jason. <laughs> uh, I don't know what it is. I, I never have coughing fits. But um, so I got to posting it online several times and got the big response. And just in talking to the different people responding to my posts, you know, people were throwing out ideas like if you were considered doing a podcast, a website, writing a book and all of those things at the time. I said, you know, I just I don't know if I have a, the mental space for it. And someone. I don't remember who it was said, well, have you ever thought about doing like a, a grief blog or a Facebook page and, you know, commemorating it to your son? And I thought, well, you know, I, I could do that. And I started copy and pasting my letters and, and, um, that that's ultimately kind of how it started was I wanted to share kind of the good, the bad and the ugly of just emotion from losing my son from kind of yeah. the male perspective, because, you or your listeners may not know, but like in a lot of these Facebook groups, it's massively overrun by women, which is fine. And there's a small number of men. And of those small number of men, a very small portion of them actually post what I would consider regularly. Mm -hmm. And I wanted a place to where men could go and not feel like whatever they were saying would be used against them because that's kind of a common thought on the male side of opening up about emotion is why am I going to open up to you, my significant other, when I know at some point it's going to get thrown back in my face. So that's kind of just the beginnings of how it started, although it has evolved from that point. That's great. Uh, has it been powerful for you then? Or how powerful has it been for you? Should I say? Um, <clears throat> In the beginning, it was it was powerful in the sense of I'm one of those people. If I don't get it out, it'll just sit inside me. It'll just tear me up on the inside, and it, I mean, it'll cause stress and sleeplessness and a multitude of things. It, so to be able to get it out was uh, very cathartic for me. However, on the other side, I can remember kind of in my mind saying. Well, you've gotten a good response in some of these groups, but you also have to kind of prepare that you may run across some people that may not like it for whatever reason. And you have to prepare yourself for the negative side of it because it is the Internet and there's always a person with an opposing opinion out here. But. Even with the amount of time I've done this page, I, I, I've yet to get a negative comment. It's all been good. It's all been, you know uh relative to the material that I'm posting. So and mm. even and even my wife said the other day, she said, you may not see it, but I see a huge change from when you started this to where we are now, just based on emotions and how you're feeling and how you're reacting. So it whether I see it or not, there's there's been a big change. That's amazing. So, yeah, because I mean with just with losing your son alone, you you're gonna go through all uh, many many stress responses. Your body, your mind, your soul is gonna go through a whole grieving process. Mm. Um, have you noticed? Have you thought about how you think your interception sort of thing? Inter how do how do you say interest perception or interception? Um, is have you recognized the change? Someone else might visually see it or feel it, but have you felt the change yeah. since creating the the group? Uh, I have, um, for those of us that kind of live as what we would call the grief life, we, we know that even though the initial has gone away, it'll always be with us. We'll of always course. have days. We'll always have moments. Yeah. <clears throat> Random things will pop up that we never thought would catch us and make us emotional that just kind of sometimes hit us like a Mack truck. But, yeah. um, you know, in the grief world, kind of the visualization that everybody kind of explains about kind of the grief process is, you know, when you first lose a loved one, uh, in my case, a child, initially it's like you're out in the ocean and a hurricane's coming and you know it's coming. You can see it in the distance. There's nothing you can do it. And it's, it's it directly for you. And in the beginning, you're just getting just crashed with waves. I mean, you're just getting beat with waves one after another after another which would symbolize just the emotional moments and and all the things related to losing a loved one mm. but after enough time that hurricane kind of moves through and then you kind of hit that the 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 eye and it calms down for a while 
and you, you know, you think everything's great. Maybe I've gotten kind of, I wouldn't say moved on for, from it, but moved forward from it. And you think everything's great. And all of a sudden that next wave comes and it just batters you for a while. Yeah. And then you, you get kind of through the hurricane and although you still get hit with waves and things, the distance and, and, and rhythm of the amount of waves the, the in between the waves hitting gets a little bit longer and a little bit longer. That's not to say that you won't eventually get hit with waves from time to time, but it just means that they're spread out more. And yeah. then you eventually get to a point where everything's pretty calm, but you always have to kind of expect kind of a, like a rogue wave to hit you from time to time and just kind of knock you off your feet yeah. is kind of how people in the grief community explain what it's like. And so I'm in that point where for the most part, things are kind of calm and I do get hit with rogue waves from time to time and I have my moments, but it's not near what it was right after the event. Yeah, sure. And, and we will dive into that, um, mm -hmm. into that scenario at some point, Jason. But first I did, I did read on your Facebook page. Um, and I, I think it, I, I read it and I, I felt, a lot of sadness and I did want to bring it up and we didn't bring it up up in the last pre-chat because obviously I've, I've gone and done, mm -hmm. tried to do a little bit of reading since. Um, but I read on your Facebook page part, your bio where bio and it, and it said that, uh, you know, you, you, you died at the age of 45 when you lost your son. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like you could change that bio statement now or do you still feel the same? I still keep it up because you know, for any parent that loses a child, there's just a part of you that's missing. Yeah. And that I stated it that way initially, because honestly, that's how I felt. But understandably, it, you know, there's still that part that's missing there. And I, I keep it up there because even though I may not feel that extreme at this point, I still have that kind of missing part uh, the other visual visual excuse me visualization that i tell people is imagine you've got a thousand piece puzzle and you put it all together and the center piece is missing and you can't find it mm. the puzzle still put together you can basically see the whole picture but there's a key component of that picture that's no longer there that you cannot find and so that's kind of more the reason why i i I keep that up. Now, have I healed per se? Yeah, I have, but there's still always that underlying, even though it's soft 99% of the time, there's still that kind of underlying feeling. Yeah. You've, you've come up with some really good ways of, of looking at it. And I, I, even just that few minutes there, I've learned mm -hmm. a different perspective of how to look at things that even that things that can't necessarily be ever filled in or found, mm -hmm. you know, um, I'm going to remember that I'm going to use, I'm going to use that for my own development. Um, so if, if, if somebody new from a viewer from this podcast was going to go to letters of Zachary, what type of community would we see in there? What type of words would we see if somebody was to go to that page right now? Well, my style on writing on letters to Zachary is very open. It's very raw. It's very, well, at this point in my journey, it may not be as raw, but I'm still very, you know, the, the, the key word these days, I'm very transparent. Um, and so I, I write from emotion. Um, I write from just what I'm feeling in that moment. And honestly, I think that's the draw for a lot of people because my initial responses to some of my journal entries that I posted was, you know, I've never told anybody that I've never explained how, you know, how it hurts and how it feels. And you've explained to the T exactly how I felt and I've never told anybody. And so I, I really think it's the willingness to whether it's good, bad, or ugly, just throw it out there and say, hey, yeah, grief is what they show you on TV and what they show you out in the world, but this is real grief from a real first-person uh, perspective. And, um, you know, I say this not to be rude to anybody, but, you know, I tell people, 
I'm not going to sugarcoat how I'm feeling. So if, if, if that's an issue or if that may trigger you, then maybe my page isn't, isn't what you're looking for. But what I will tell you is it will always be honest. It will always be truthful. It's, it's, it's how I'm doing, how I'm feeling. It's not targeted at anybody. It's not putting anybody else down. We all feel something differently. So, you know, I, I tell people that come to the page. I mean, I have a lot of followers, but as someone, as the person who runs the page, I've got my core group of people that always comment and, and they're very understanding and they're very agreeable and they're very, um, you know, yeah. nobody bashes anybody by any stance uh, just because I, I'm, I put that boundary down from the beginning of we're all grieving. It's not your right to tell anybody how to grieve. We Absolutely. all do it differently. So I, I try to make it inclusive in the sense of, you know, I may not grieve like you. So long as what you're telling me is not something that may hurt yourself, you can say whatever you like. Yeah. I bring this guest up quite a lot because we had a we had a bit, bit of a cry on this on this podcast of um, I think it was episode six uh, Paul Eldikin, and he lost his partner to suicide and um, I he was a friend of mine so I had met up with him and told him about my trauma and um, he sat there and he heard me he didn't say anything he just sat in it and I bring this up quite a lot because weeks later we met up and did the same thing again and he mm -hmm. told me his. And I sat back and went, my trauma doesn't feel like any trauma compared to that. Mm -hmm. And he said to me, but Andy, there's no ranking on trauma. Yeah. And I just, that's again, stuck with me ever since. And we, we cried on the episode and I think that was powerful. And, and I think those people who, um, what you've just touched on, everyone was grieving in different ways, no matter what the scenario is or what mm -hmm. the trauma is, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And I think, how many followers do you have, Jason? Uh, I'm as of this morning, I'm at a thousand forty-five, and that has been accumulated over. I've only been doing this page about nine months, so I wow. have a little over a thousand followers. We, you mentioned um, what I've learned. Sorry, you've met, you've just mentioned. Then you have a, a, a you know a common community that's tend to speak what i've learned from this podcast is even though many people might well i've got i have quite a lot of people reaching out however based on the some of the numbers that i have on youtube and so on not many people i would say would reach out compared to what it looks like would and um and and again speaking to other people uh from the podcast the, the guests that i've learned there's so many people out there that might not be speaking Mm -hmm. but you're helping every single one of them who are not mm -hmm. speaking. They're they're sitting, they're observing, they're taking in, and they still mm -hmm. need you, even though you might not feel that they're responding to you. You probably mm -hmm. already know this, but one day, one oh, yeah. comment, one word, it might lighten them just to go, "I'm here, and I've been mm -hmm. watching the entire time. Thank you for that." You know, mm -hmm. so it's powerful, no matter who's speaking or who not speaking. Um, mm -hmm. Anyway, that was just a little bit from me, Jason. You probably <laughs> already knew that, but I, I just felt it was important to say. Um, Thanks for sharing uh, a little bit about Letters to Zachary and, and, and what you've gone on, because it has painted a picture in the direction where these podcasters are going to go. But I, I tend to usually start off the episode by asking, and it's probably already clear, but how do you feel you are leading your own way today? Um, you know, men are an interesting gender, I will <laughs> say, because... Oh, because in the evolution of the page, it was initially made for specifically men, just because of the whole stereotype that men have a hard time opening up, talking about their emotions, that kind of thing. Yeah. It has since evolved to just about, just about anybody that's grieving. But I, you know, men are also, there's a, a good portion of men out there that don't really want to do something until they see someone else doing it. And so a long time ago, well before my son passed away, I just got this idea in my head of instead of complaining about it, actually try to do something about it. And so when I finally got to the point of creating letters to Zachary and posting my journal entries, I thought, well, whether everybody likes it or not, at least I'm out there as an example. So maybe some other man or maybe a, a wife will direct her husband 
to the page and he can say, well, hey, he's doing it. Let me take a look at this. And honestly, for most folks, that's all it really takes is, hey, I see someone else doing it. Let's see what's going on. Let's kind of see their reaction and they kind of make a decision on what they want to do. And so uh, that's that's more the reason for just the reason why I'm doing everything is me being out there helping other men, women, whoever's on the page uh, helps me along in my process yeah. uh, to see people that, although they have not experienced exactly the same thing I have, we're all kind of in the general same ballpark, if you will. Uh, just, you know, the other, the, the, the explanation I give to people is, let's say, for example, you're in a football stadium watching American football. And I said, we're all watching the same game. But the difference is, is I'm sitting down in the expensive seats at the 50 yard line watching it. And that's my perspective. Whereas you're up in the nosebleeds watching the same game, but you have a completely different perspective than I do. So we're all still there. We're all experiencing. It just depends on where we're at yeah. is, is what I tell people. And so I'm just trying to welcome people from, you know, all different points of view in this journey to come to the page and, and, you know, have them comment on whatever's posted just because I take from a lot of different sources. Yeah. It, it's fascinating. You'll be able to relate to this, but I definitely can connect with everything you've just said there because we're both in education and we're going to get into that in a second. Um, I'm a teacher by day, so school holidays, end of uh, mm. term two here at the moment, we go back on Monday. I know it's the summer holidays there for you. Uh, it's mm -hmm. actually the winter holidays here for us. But mm -hmm. I, I, take, I say to the kids, and this is one thing about curriculum and, and how curriculum um it's like collecting data. No one, everyone collects numbers, but the, nobody sees the character behind those numbers and the face and the personalities and the mm -hmm. different clicking moments these children have. And um, the same for perspective. I say to them in the classroom, not that I believe they should be in a classroom all day, every day, but I, I do mm -hmm. say to them, look, I could be saying one thing. I, I want you to, t I want you to take everything I'm saying, take in a direction that is unique for you and was, is better for you and that suits your character and personality better because even though we're all looking at the same thing in this room or looking at the same tree we're all going to see that tree completely different and you've mm. just made me add one more layer to that about the seating arrangement that is mm -hmm. that's a really good uh, mm -hmm. uh, a good way of explaining the different viewpoints and i'm going to use that one in class from now on so thanks for that jason um well, before we get into you and what we're doing, Jason, and your family a little bit. I, I feel like it's a, we should have done this earlier, to be fair, and I apologize. But it's, this is a tribute to you, uh, Jason, and, and your family, and, mm -hmm. um, and to obviously Zachary as well. But I, I, I want to show the viewers who are watching um, a few of the pictures, but I think that's only okay. fair. So I'm just going to grab the one of you and the family first, Jason. Um, you, we've not mentioned names, but I'm going to leave that to you if you want to. Obviously, yourself, Jason, and Zachary, but this is your whole family. Uh, it's such a beautiful picture, and I felt this should be at the, the, the forefront of the studio. Um, I'm sorry, sure. my glass actually broke. So I'm it's okay. <laughs> um, so talk to us a little bit about your family here, Jason. Well, you got me sitting on the end. The boy next to me is my son, Zachary. The girl next to him is my daughter, Samantha. And the woman on the other end is my wife, Jennifer. Beautiful. That was taken, uh, the, th that was taken the Thanksgiving before he passed away. I mean, little did we know at the time. So that was, that right there is our last full family picture, uh, that we ever took. Uh, that was taken at my folks' house uh, at, uh, at again, like I said, at Thanksgiving break. Yeah, nice. Oh, well, I'm glad. I'm glad it's here with us now. And uh, I think another one that I really like is just uh, because I'm talking to you, Jason, is the one with uh, the yeah good connection here between you and Zachary. Beautiful picture. That uh, that was just. I'm I'm the picture taker between my wife and I, and I just. Honestly, I'm surprised he sat that way because I was at the point that I was constantly taking pictures and he, he was kind of getting to the point. He was just like, are you taking another picture? <laughs> and so uh, I just happened to snap that. It's that one. It's between that one and there's another one. Um, one. I don't know if I sent it to you, but it's between that one and another one that are my two favorite pictures. 
uh, on there. So, what was the other picture that you was one of your favorites? Uh, there was one that I did where uh, we're sitting in a pool and he's looking at me and I'm looking at him. I don't think I sent it. To no, you, you didn't send that one. No. And so, and honestly, that one was, it was through the special needs organization that we're part of. It was kind of a reunion of, event that we were doing. And it was a professionally done picture that they just happened to snap as we, uh, as I was sitting there doing something with my son in the pool. And so, yeah, the, the it was between the one you showed and the, the other one. So, yeah. I, th I think this is probably a good time to, um, before we get into a little bit more personal about yourself, tell us a little bit about Zachary's personality. Join us tomorrow to hear more from today's incredible guests and learn valuable insights to help you lead your own way. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you then.